Okay, so this is a, a sample question that I wrote uh, regarding deployment. And if you watched my previous video, you saw that by looking at the exam guide, uh, one of the errors that you're tested in is deployment. So first of all, I was going to start out with deployment. And I wrote a, a sample question, and it goes like this. Which of the following AWS services will allow you to quickly and consistently manage resources as infrastructure as code and when you're uh, taking the exam uh, one of the important things to look at is keywords and right here we see the word quickly and consistently and then the other one is infrastructure as code so the question is which one of these services can do that now if if you're not familiar with AWS or if you're not familiar with some of these other services obviously you may not know but if you look at the first one here is uh, Elastic Beanstalk if you're familiar with AWS you know that it is a service uh, B code deploy uh, you know that that one is also a service and AWS CloudFormation you know that one is a service and the last one AWS managed code and you may be thinking, okay, you know what, I've never heard of that one. Um, it may not be a service. So if you're sure that D is not a service, you can eliminate that one from the answers. So you're left with the first three, Beanstalk, Code Deploy, and CloudFormation. Well, the answer is C, CloudFormation. Now, CloudFormation allows you to quickly and consistently manage resources as infrastructure as code. Now with CloudFormation you can create templates um, that are written in uh, either YAML, a text file, or JSON. And in those templates you can specify for example if you want to create uh, three EC2 instances and you want to put them inside a VPC and you want to give them a, a security group you can do that with um, CloudFormation so let's say you you do that on the uh, US East uh, Virginia region now, as soon as you deploy that um, you know you'll be able to manage your resources there but if you want to quickly and consistently do the same thing on another region let's say somewhere in California, US uh, California, then you can take the same template and deploy it to another region. So that's quickly and consistently and it also is infrastructure as code. All right, so let's look at uh, the next question. Okay, so you work for a small company with two developers building web app applications in .NET. No one is available to manage the infrastructure and both need to focus on development a hundred percent of the time which of the following services should be used okay so code deploy is a service pipeline code pipeline is also a service elastic beanstalk is a service and code commit it's also a service so any one of these can be a, a valid answer but what we're looking at here is the developers cannot manage infrastructure. So we need a service that would allow us to deploy our code and host it. Now, the first one, uh, the first answer is code deploy. You see, one of the things about AWS code deploy is that's what it does. It just deploys. So we know that that one is not the answer. The next one is AWS Code Pipeline. Well, with pipeline, with pipeline, you can work with some of the other services together to make a pipeline. Okay, so that that one is not going to work. Uh, so we're left with Beanstalk and Code Commit. Now let me go down to Code Commit. Uh, code commit is just like GitHub or GitLab. Uh, it's gonna host your code. 
So that's not what we're looking for. That we're looking for something that will manage the infrastructure for our developers. So the answer is Beanstalk. With Beanstalk, um, you can focus on your infrastructure. Excuse me. You can focus on your code as a developer, and then let Bean uh, Beanstalk um, handle the deployment and uh, the infrastructure that goes along with it. Okay, so we've now gone over two sample questions, and if you have not uh, been, a been able to answer the question for uh, the first question and the second question, then you got to ask yourself, um, you know, do I really, do I really know this? Um, you know, I've never heard of these services, or I, uh, um, it was difficult for me to answer these questions. Well, that's your indication that you know you need to do some some work. Let's go to the next question. You are working with in CloudFormation template for the first time. All right, so now going back to uh, question number one, we uh, the question was pertaining to CloudFormation, and we know that we can quickly and consistently manage resources and um, um, you know write um, um, write the code in a, a YAML format or JSON format in a um, in, 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 in the template so here um, it says uh, let's say this is our first time and we've, we've gone over the documentation and uh, we try to see how we build the template and now we're being asked um, which of the following sections are part of the template so we have A, B, C, D, and E and we are to select three well, if, if you don't know what the answer is, uh, we're going to look at the documentation so we can uh, get some assistance here. So let's go ahead and um, open up the browser. And we want to go to the cloud formation anatomy okay and this document here um, gives us all the sections of a uh, cloud formation template and I'm going to scroll down on I know this is in JSON format, um, but I like, I like to go down to the YAML format. Okay, so we see that the sections that are inside a template, a CloudFormation template, are the uh, the version, the description, metadata, parameters, mappings, conditions, transform, resources, and outputs. So A is found in the template. B containments, we don't see that in the template, so that's not it. Snapshots, we don't see that in the template. We do see resources D and we do see outputs E. So if the question is asking us uh, to select three, well the answer here would be a conditions, D resources, and E outputs. And later on in a couple of videos, uh, we're going to work with um, a CloudFormation template, and we're going to be working with some of these sections here. So, um, if you did not know what the answer was, um, you know we went to the documentation and we can memorize these sections. But see, it's always best to get some hands-on training, and um, you know. That way, uh, when you take the exam, um, uh, you'll be able to better remember, um, you know, some of these answers and some of these sections that are contained in the CloudFormation template. I think that that's just a better approach. Is just to uh, get some hands-on experience and you know, just be able to uh, be able to see uh, what CloudFormation is all about. Okay. All right. So let's go to um, question four. You are updating an existing CloudFormation template in YAML 
and wanted to make it more dynamic by forcing the EC2 instances to be created using an AMI from the region the template is executed from. Which of the following syntax is valid? So basically, um, with the CloudFormation template, um, you can hard code uh, the AMI. So for example, if I wrote a CloudFormation template to launch a new EC2 instance, um, I have to give it uh, AMI. And let's say if I gave it an AMI of a Linux uh, machine, um, you know, I, I, I can't do that. But if I want to reuse the template, uh, what I want to do is uh, just create a list of AMIs that are available. And um, that way I have um, more options. So the syntax that we see here is um, this is a function, a built-in function for uh, CloudFormation where I have a list of regions. Okay, so my list would be the region map. And let's say if I have um, five AMIs that I can choose from, uh, what this function is going to do is it's going to um, find the AMIs that are available in that region. So which of the following syntax is valid? And, and if you don't know what the syntax, what, what syntax is valid, um, you know, it, it, it's an indication that, you know, you're not familiar with, um, with writing uh, these templates. So what you do is, is you want to get familiar and you want to write um, as much templates as possible. That way, when you take the exam, um, you may get a question uh, with some with some syntax. I know that for me, uh, um, I remember getting a question on CloudFormation one time on the exam, and it asked me on syntax. So um, you know, that's just something to keep in mind. Okay, let's go to the next question. Which of the following is not a valid built-in function, an intrinsic function of AWS CloudFormation? So you, we, we have three, uh, excuse me, we have five options, A, B, C, D, and E. Well, once again, if you don't know what the answer is, um, that's just an indication that you're not familiar with CloudFormation and you haven't really worked with it. Uh, so. What we want to do is uh, go back to the documentation and look at the um, the functions. Okay, let's see here. Right, so let's go back to. Built in functions. Okay. All right. So this is the list of all the the functions that are available to us in a confirmation uh, template. Uh, so the first one here is get az's, which is here. The second one is ref. The third one is finding map. So that's those are all, all three are valid. Then F and stack. All right, so that one is not valid. Um, and then F and base 64 is here. So the question is, which of the following is not a valid built-in function? All right, so we can pick this one out of the uh, the list here. So as you can see, as um, you know, we're going through some of these uh, sample questions. Um, you know, if you've had trouble. Um, with the answer, uh, like a, a, again, this is an indication that you know uh, you have some work to do and uh, you're lacking in knowledge. Um, but that's okay because we're going to go over um, some of these things and uh, we're going to try to get our hands uh, dirty as much as possible. All right, if you just stick around uh, to the next videos, uh, we'll learn a little bit more.